Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to discover one of my favorite digital formats. Oh yeah. I know, this is an analog channel, but every once in a while, I add a little touch of digital. Ready? Let's take a look. Okay guys, so today we're going to talk of one of my favorite digital mediums. In my most humble opinion, this is the pinnacle of digital audio reproduction. And it's something rather old actually. What am I talking about? DVD audio. Perhaps you've heard about it, maybe someone didn't. It's something that, as I said, it's old. This was mainly developed around the first years of the 2000s. So mainly 2000, 2001, 2002, and then it slowly went down. What happened? Well, actually, during the end of the 90s, a lot of people felt that the, the CDs were not giving a high quality standard. Uh, a lot of people were disappointed. Uh, it was time also to move on. The, the format was already old in the 90s. And uh, different solutions were starting to emerge. And there was a huge battle at a certain point between DVD audio and the other huge format that Sony presented, Super Audio CD. Which actually is transformed, but is still present today. In fact, we're gonna do a video on it because Super Audio CD is DSD audio, but we'll, we'll get back to that. Today, we're gonna discuss about the other format, if we have to declare a winner between between the two, we can't. We can just say that we have a larger production of Super Audio CDs than DVD audios. So maybe it's a slight winner, who knows. But we don't care about that. We care about the quality about these discs. This was my first, Jerry Rafferty, Can I Have My Money Back? Which also has uh, two albums, I think, or a series of, of other songs on it. Because as you can imagine, these are DVDs, but not uh, readable. You could not insert these in a normal CD player. And that was already a huge problem uh, in terms of compat compatibility. Well, the industry thought that since DVD was become, becoming big, it, and it was in that, in that period, and for a, a few other years after that, might as well try to insert the possibility of having high quality audio through that, through the player, through the, uh, the DVD player, which unfortunately people did not want to do, we discovered afterwards. The same will, will, is going to be done also for Blu-ray players, since we have Blu-ray Pure Audio, etc. Even that did not reach uh, enough popularity to be uh, adopted by the different labels and be assessed itself, unfortunately. Because today, as we all know, liquid music is, is paramount. But as you all also know, we're going back to, to, to vinyl, to uh, physical formats. But that's another section. If we're talking about digital, today we only have streaming or HD tracks, high resolution in that form. And we are going to go more in depth in that as well. But I, again, I want to focus on DVD audio because there's one special element about these special discs. As you can see, they, they have this very strange format, this jewel case, which is uh, almost square. All the discography, for example, of a Steely Dan. If you don't know Steely Dan, you have to know Steely Dan. They, they, they were one of the first to go full in, all the way in, to do all their albums in uh, DVD audio. And the quality of these, as I was saying, is amazing. Why is this? Because I think, this is my opinion, when it was a magical moment, when uh, the producers, the labels decided to transfer main albums, famous albums, as you can see, just a few albums are were, were currently released in that precise moment. There are mainly reissues. And they did, I think, almost flat transfers. I mean, there's no 
equalization or at least very slight uh the transfers are very high quality the conversions i have no idea why they're exceptional these recordings here these digital versions are truly amazing trust me guys i have i i i mean if you get a super audio cd for me it does not reach this type of quality this one for example ellis and tom jobim it's amazing it's 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 incredible i also have the original lp of this which costs a lot of, the, of euros this compared to that lp is better don't kill me it's better I mean, the dynamic range that they captured directly from the master tapes, because all these were obtained directly from the master tapes, is incredible. In fact, they still go for high prices on eBay. But you, that's practically Discogs and eBay are all the only places where you're going to still find these. <clears throat> and again, the sound is amazing. You have to look, though. Try If you want to try experiment some of these, you have to look for those containing high linear PCM audio. If you're interested in 5.1 surround, okay, because that's also in here, as you can imagine. That This was one of the first formats to have multi-channel. 5.1, etc. even quad, they tried it, different kinds of things. And unfortunately, what is the problem here? That a lot of people were focusing mainly on DTS, Dolby Digital Surround. No, guys, we want linear PCM, stereo, two channel. In fact, only with stereo linear PCM, you can reach the maximum resolution of these, which is 192 kilohertz per 24 bits. While instead, um, uh, the other types of surround reach maximum 94 kilohertz per 24 bits. So I think you, you, it, it's worth to take a shot and try these. Obviously, obviously, you need a DVD audio, not DVD video, DVD audio. It, this is a different logo, um, capable machine to deal with that. And now they're pretty rare, although I'm sure you can find them on eBay, etc., for a very low price or Hi-Fi Shark. Remember, I, I in that video, I discussed all the different resources where to find gear online, even use at good prices. Here's a link. Okay, so again, there are a lot of Blu-ray players today, or DVD players, they're still out there, which are capable of uh, reading the DVD audio codec format, because otherwise you can't. What happened at a certain point? They realized that uh, they were losing a lot of people, a lot of customers, of clients. I mean, people were not using these because you need a specific, a specific special machine, not a normal DVD player. And that was the downside of all of that. In fact, very late, already in 2005, 2006, etc., even later, they tried different new solutions. Like maybe you heard about dual disc where on one side you had a CD, on the other side you had DVD audio, just to give the opportunity to listen also in the CD player. Or things like this, which it looks like a normal, fantastic John Coltrane album, Blue Train. This is a special HDAD. This is something that's already dead. Where on one side you have 124 bits, 192 kilohertz sampling rate, which is for DVD audio, and on the other, here we broke a taboo, which only on one side you can record on, on uh, digital media. Here on both sides you have you have audio. On the other side, we have 24 bits, 96 kilohertz, because only recently, only afterwards, they started to put material that is was readable also by normal DVD video machines, which can reach 24 bits per 96 kilohertz of sampling rate. So if you want to go maximum, you're going to need a DVD audio machine. If you're if you're in you're good with 96 kilohertz, 24 bits, you can use your normal Blu-ray um, player or DVD player, no problem. For example, in fact, other artists at a certain point that wanted to reach higher quality, we all know that Neil Young was really into this, and he still is, but unfortunately that drifted a little bit away. He was really in a high resolution audio. He, he, he's releasing all his uh, collection, all his albums, all his recordings in very high resolution. He, he created Pono, 
that music player with for high res high res before anybody else did that. That's that's very cool. He did this album, which I think is very good, which came out in the uh, 2005, I think, or, or something like that. And he put a normal CD version, but he also put a DVD version, which is a DVD video. And in this case, it is a 96 kilohertz sampling rate by 24 bits. So, and I must admit that the, 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 the difference between the CD and, and the, the other version is incredible. It's fantastic. It's much, much better. And when you find versions, for example, like uh, uh, this one by Steely Dan, which is you have the advanced resolution stereo 192 24 this is mind-blowing the quality of digital here finally digital has a purpose i think exceptional dynamic range full frequency response it does have that a little bit of coldness that digital keeps always but we're distant from a normal cd oh boy oh boy this is much much better okay guys uh one of the downsides of this format is that in order to understand what you're selecting, because you can select the different types of ver uh, versions, the different files, you have to have a screen connected. You have to turn it on, you have to look what, what you're looking for. Sometimes it's cool, there are other videos, pictures going while the music is rolling, but I just wanna put it in and listen to it. And that's also, I think, some a reason why people did not buy so many. Okay, I just wanna add one uh, specific aspect, which I think is interesting. Most of the 5.1 tracks on these, in some, some cases also the stereo, have a lossless compression, MLP, which stands for, maybe you guessed it, Meridian Lossless Packaging. Yes, those who invented MQA, because MQA is a, a lossy, although, compression by Meridian. I think that it's something very similar that they were looking on, they were studying, doing research on, and there probably is a connection between the two. In any case, I hope you're gonna try to explore these. I think they're fantastic. One of the few digital uh, formats that true give me, that really give me some uh, vibration, some emotions. And uh, leave your comments here below. Let me know what you think about it. And apart from this digital stuff, guys, remember, Music is born analog. Bye-bye.